That's right, everyone. We're going to be playing Nancy Drew, Tomb of the Lost Queen. This is number 26 in the series. I'm your Gibbs, and we're here to play more Nancy Drew. I've played a bunch of these games, and I've linked most of them down in the description for each video. So if you want to see my playstyle or you're not sure, go ahead and look at some previously recorded Nancy Drew adventure games. Uh, let's just look, uh, have a quick look at the options here. The music seems a little quiet, but it could be my headphones. I don't know. We'll play around with that a little bit later. It looks like we actually are having outtakes in this one. I know there weren't any outtakes in the last Nancy Drew. I actually thought there might be. Uh, more Nancy Drew, so, uh, you know, there's tons of games here. I haven't played any of these early ones. I might go back and pick a few select ones, but uh, I started uh, recording, let's see, right around, no, here. This was the first one that, well, technically I recorded uh, The Ghost of Thorn Hall, but this was the first of kind of the older ones, I guess you could say. And I've recorded Shadow at Water's Edge, Captive Curse, and Alibi and Ashes, and of course now we're doing The Tomb of the Lost Queen. So let's not waste any more time, let's hit the new game button. And this is the first time they've actually started to use Master Sleuth and Amateur Sleuth. I think it was Detective before that. So we're going to go ahead and hit the Master Sleuth. Sixty years ago, a violent sandstorm uncovered an ancient tomb in the desert outside Cairo. A British expedition set off in hope of finally finding Egypt's legendary Lost Queen. The expedition never returned. The explorers were lost, presumed dead. For 60 years, the grisly tale of the cursed team remained the only proof of the tomb's existence. A lot, actually. The crew left after the storm. They kept talking about the old team that disappeared, and then they were gone. Oh, who cares? I'm just glad you're okay. About that... What? Well, the docs here say there's reason to believe I was attacked. Nancy, you're the only one I can trust now. I need you to be my eyes and ears until I can get out of here. But I just came here to job shadow you. Are you sure? Will you be coming back? As soon as they release me. Until then, keep me updated on what you're seeing. I've got some notes in my bunk area. Get caught up to speed. Keep everything you find between you and me. The less you seem to know, the safer you'll be. Got it. I'll see if I can prove whose tomb this is and find out who attacked you. All right, cool. So we have to work with John Boyle, looks like. That's going to be interesting. I'll let you go. Bye. Bye. You know, I've always wanted to go to Egypt. Actually, uh, when I was younger, archaeology was one of my dream jobs. Right after architect. <laughs> okay, let's have a look around here. Anything interesting? Doesn't look like it. Oh, hello there. Nancy, you decided to stay? Of course. Good. We need all the help we can get. Look, this is awkward. What's that? Professor Boyle is gone, and I have to say this to keep things from getting awkward, but look, I'm assuming the authority in the time being. Are you sure everyone here agrees to that? I just meant the American team, which is just you. Right. I can take care of myself. I'm sure you can, but can you take care of a site that's thousands of years old? I'll answer that for you. No, you cannot. Is that necessary? Do we really need someone in charge? Yes, it is. 
but it shouldn't affect you all that much. I'm not going to go on a power trip or anything crazy. Trust me. I just don't want the site to fall into chaos. I'm working entirely out of Professor Boyle's playbook. Did you see what happened to Professor Boyle? I couldn't see a thing. I couldn't keep my eyes open for a second. Did you know Professor Boyle was attacked? At least that's what the doctors think. Who told you that? He did. Don't worry. He's probably just all turned around from the injury. There's nothing to worry about here. I'd better get going. Mm -hmm. See ya. I don't know if I trust you, actually. I don't know. Oh, what's this? Ooh. Oh, more fans. Aw, oh, cool. Nom nom. Coco Kringle. Delicious. Great. I could use this to translate the hieroglyphs. Egyptian hieroglyphic to English, hieroglyphic Clark's book, okay. How to read Egyptian hieroglyphs, property of... Whoa. Alright, so I'm going to definitely have to do a bunch of screenshots here just to make sure I've got all this captured. I'm assuming I'm going to have to solve a bunch of clues. Nifty. Very, very cool. Wonder how many more fans are going to be hidden everywhere. The Lost Queens of Egypt by Professor Beatrice. Dear Mandy, you were so keen on my book about Mary Antoinette. I knew you'd enjoy my latest book about these magnificent women. If you've ever liked to learn more, I do love to talk about them. Phone number. The Lost Queens of Egypt. That was a long time ago. Nephrodite, Cleopatra. That's cool. Yeah, so they've actually changed the. Uh, I think this is, I guess, the more modern interface down here. Take a picture just because can. There we go. Yeah, we're saving that totally. Let's see who we can actually call here. So we got Bess. Let's call Bess. Hi, Bess. Hi, Bess. Nancy! How goes the old mummy hunt? Good, I think. Maybe bad. Something happened, didn't it? There was a sandstorm, and the professor from Kingston had to be taken to the hospital. Nancy, be careful out there. It sounds dangerous. I will. George is all wrapped up in that new job of hers. But you can call me anytime you need help. Full disclosure, while I do play an Egyptologist on television, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Ha ha ha. Lily seems very uptight. Do you think she's hiding something? No doubt about it. I just don't know if it's relevant. Strange behavior is rarely irrelevant, especially in a group that isolated. <laughs> Good point. I'm not sure what to do. Check around to see if there's anything to help you get a better idea of what's going on at the site. Someone should have left some notes around. John probably had some. All right, sounds like a good idea. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. All right, let's call uh, Professor Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss here. It's Nancy Drew. Oh, Francine, dear, I'm so glad you called. I've been having the most infuriating problem with my internet. This is Nancy Drew. Oh, you young people are so refreshing. Always learn a few identities. The problem is that I downloaded this program called Weather Monkey. At my age, it's important that I keep abreast of all meteorological developments. But now I'm starting a new book, and I can't focus on my work because the Weather Monkey keeps yelling the weather at me. Maybe you should uninstall it? I will do no such thing. That would be tantamount to murder. <sighs> Maybe turn it down? Brilliant and fantastic. Oh, yes, Samantha, you are a ticket. I would love to help you, but uh, how do I know you again? Nancy, Drew, we've met a few times. Aha, now I remember you. If life were a good book, you'd be my favorite reoccurring character. I'm in Egypt, and I need your help. Egypt? 
Well, why didn't you say that instead of chattering away about my internet problems? I don't know how to respond to that. I read your book, and I thought maybe you could help. You found my book while you were in Egypt. <gasps> the serendipity is as delectable as Chateaubriand smothered in lavender lemon juice. I am at your disposal. I didn't exactly find it. You sent it to me. You even signed it. Oh, dear. I sign and send lots of things. Really? Really? That's the way you're going to take this? Have you heard of an expedition that went off in search of Nefertari years ago? Oh, yes. The team in which everyone died. Is that the one? Yes. Do you think that story is true? Oh, heavens, yes. It's deadly out there in the desert. Think about it. You're going out there in search of dead bodies. There must be a reason they're in favor of the area. But this expedition wasn't searching for QV-66, right? Indeed not. That had already been discovered. They were searching for Nefertari's mummy. What do you think happened to them? Oh, it's best you not concern yourself about that now, given your current location. Oh, thanks. What do you know about Nefertari? <gasps> ah, a love story. I'll break out the tissue papyrus because when I'm done, there won't be a dry Horus in the house. <laughs> uh, what? Look it up, dear. Ramses the Second and Nefertari shared a love so vast, the world could scarcely contain it. I'm talking about the kind of love you spell capital L, capital O, heart instead of a V, capital E. They stood side by side and ruled the world, but as they saw the years stretch out before them, they were keenly aware that a handful of decades would never cut it. They needed to be together always. That's sweet. And relevant. The ancient Egyptians believed that life was little more than a dress rehearsal for eternity. I found records that they concocted a plan to be together forever, side by side. Why not be buried side by side? They foresaw a volatile future for their kingdom, and they were correct. They knew they would have to enact safeguards. That's why in 1904, when QV-66, the so-called tomb of Nefertari, was found, her body was not there. What are the chances we found Nefertari's tomb? If I were a gambling Hotchkiss, I'd say 60-40. I still don't get all this business with QV-66. Why build a fake tomb? For the same reason I never carry my passport in my purse when I travel. Some things are too valuable to leave in a tempting place. You mentioned an expedition that found QV-66, Nefertari's tomb. It was one of the most significant finds in archaeology. They call it the Sistine Chapel of Egypt. It's where my fascination with the royalty of Egypt was born. The color alone took my breath away. We think of ancient Egypt as being a subdued sand color, but it was a riotous display with all the visual delights of a midsummer gelato shop cooler case. And you don't think Nefertari was entombed there? They only found kneecaps, which supposedly means that her tomb was robbed. You disagree? I do. What good is the mummy without the context? It's the placement in the tomb that makes the mummy valuable. Why is Nefertari so important? There are two queens I find most fascinating in ancient Egypt, and for exactly the same reason. They were hidden. Hatshepsut is the first. I think I've heard of her. She was the pharaoh that was almost removed from the historical record, right? Exactly! Twenty-some years of peace and stability, and after she dies, thut most the thirds, ancient cronies try to erase her from the record. Why? Jealousy, revenge, fear that his reign would never equal hers. You name it, but you can't keep a good woman down. Despite the efforts of Thutmose Third's supporters, her legacy endured. And Nefertari? In my opinion, she's the opposite. She was obsessively preserved in the historical record, but it was her tomb that was hidden. How sure are you that Nefertari's tomb was hidden? There was something strange about QV-66. I think that might be why it is off-limits to this day. It is? To you and me, at the very least. There is a rumor that the tomb has a clue to the true location of Nefertari's mummy.
Really? Who knows? I'll tell you this. I didn't have time to read all of the hieroglyphs, but I noticed that the syntax was a little, shall we say, wonky? I don't know how hieroglyph syntax could be non-wonky. True, but it was almost as if Nefertari and Ramses II had their own language. Wow, and there you go. That is quite the Egyptian lesson we've had. Bye-bye. Goodbye. That is a mountain of information. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here and check the next one. Who else can I call? Okay, so we did that. We don't need anything there. Uh. Whoa, you cannot go back there. I'm looking for Professor Boyle's notes. His notes are off limits. He wants me to have them. Call him if you don't believe me. I will. Trust me. Okay, then do it. I'll let you go. Bye. Okay, did you and call? And she's back. <laughs> and she's back. I'd better get going. See ya! Uh, can we call him ourselves then, if you're just gonna be all silly about it? Nancy, hello. Lily seemed upset about me doing any work here. <laughs> Show me a PhD student who isn't upset about something, and I'll build you your very own pyramid. Why would she want to keep me away from your work? I have no clue. If she wants to play at being in charge, let her. It'll save you a lot of headaches. What do you know about Lily? Not much. She's with Abdullah's team. It's just strange that she's out there. Why? I never say a critical word about a student, but uh, the archaeology community is small. People talk. <laughs> I guess all I'm going to say is... It's surprising Adela put her on his team. You can't just leave it at that. The curiosity center of my brain is going to go into full meltdown. I can't, Nancy. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to talk about it. Intriguing. Bye. Bye. Now are you doing? Hello. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. JB. Dear John, I heard at the recent Paris and Williams Archaeological Gala that you are still looking for the perfect applicant to find to round out your team for the upcoming dig in Egypt. I'm writing to recommend Nancy Drew. As a candidate for consideration, Nancy worked for us as a deputy curator at the Beach Hill Museum and with her observations, skills, and attention to detail. La 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 la. That's kind of cool. My very own recommendation. We'll take that lighter. Lighters indeed. Notebook! Oh, let's see what we have here. As a result, the same phrase can often be represented with different hieroglyphics. Take the name. Okay. Part of John's notes are missing. That doesn't seem right. Hmm. Indeed. So, what can we do here? I need to get out of here. This game looks cool. Can we play? Yes. The goal is to get all of your pieces off the board first. When a token reaches the last square, it's removed from the board. To move, throw the sticks. The number of light sticks determines how many spaces you move. If all four sticks are dark, then you get to move five squares. Okay. I threw a two. What does that mean? You can move any of your tokens to either an empty square or a square occupied by your opponent. Uh, okay. So, what do I do? Can't do that. Can't do that. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Can't do that. If you throw a one, four, or five, move a token and then throw the sticks again. If no moves are available, the player skips their turn. I rolled a three, so I'll move my token three spaces. 
If you land on an opponent, you swap places, sending your opponent's token back to your token starting position. If an opponent has two or more tokens in adjacent squares, then they've created a block. You can't swap places with a token in a block, but you can move over it. There are five special squares on the board, each with their own name and design. The square with the Ankh is a safe square, and the token on this square can't be swapped. All tokens must stop on the square with the bird, even if the throw would have moved them past it. They can move past it on their next turn. Landing on the square with the water sends that token back to the square with the Ankh. The last two are safe squares, so tokens can't be swapped. Let's start a game. You can go first. Okay. Can't do that. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here. Four. Oh yeah, I gotta keep forgetting how to stop there. One of two. Perfect! Come on, next one is gonna make me win the game. Yeah. Congratulations to the senator from Egypt! Me! Woohoo, we did it!